Woof. Oh. Woof. Hello, everyone. It's me, flipping through different pages. It's time for Tuesday Night's Hall Pass with Two Dogs Digs. And tonight, we're talking how low can you go? Selling $10 items on eBay and Etsy. And is that the kind of thing you should be doing? Shouldn't be doing? Is there something right about it? Are there ways to do it? Are there wrong ways to go about it? Uh, and we thought we'd chat with someone who we talk with all the time, who is up in our neck of the woods, Mr. Carl, the lazy reseller. Hey, how's Carl and I, we have some of the same tactics, but also don't necessarily agree in the same ways that some things that Carl might say, oh, I would never do that. Or I've tried it and I don't want to do that anymore. And at the same time, I might be going, well, you may have tried it and failed with the one aspect of the items you found, but what about my item? That could have worked. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about that first because everybody has different ways of actually handling what they want to sell. But we see a lot of stuff that's listed for under $10. And we, a lot of times, in all honesty, a lot of times we literally go, what the heck are they doing? Why have they bothered? What is the purpose of this? I don't understand. I, I mean, if I'm shopping for something, maybe it's a great thing. And yes, on the occasional Facebook, like little auction site, when someone wants to start something for a dollar and I get it for a dollar, I'm like, woohoo! But that's not the same as selling on eBay or Etsy or Posh or Depop or any of the other platforms. Yeah. Um, because it literally, there's things involved that people don't think about, like fees, like <laughs> like the cost of goods, yeah. like packing material, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to talk about that. That's our first half. We're going to talk about it. And then the second half, we're going to start, we're going to talk a little bit more about how we actually figure out if there's ways for us to up our game so that our average selling price is higher. So that obviously if you're selling stuff for 10 bucks, your average selling price balances out. You got a hundred dollar item, you got a $10 item, your average is $50, but depends how much you're selling. You could have a ton of stuff, you're packing all that sort of stuff. So that's kind of the, the gist of where we we're going to be talking today is what would you do? How do you do stuff? Um, and then how do we do stuff and how, and what are, and, and again, some of the other people, what, what they might be doing in it. Before I go to there, I just want to send, I got to go through this little message that I've got to find that uh, we got the other day, because we're always looking for uh, things when you get a really nice message or a really nice feedback or something like that from someone. And we sold an item uh, a little while back, and it took us a long, long time to sell this. It was one of those silly things. I thought I'd start out with what I consider to be a really sort of fun, good, positive thing on something. So we had these items and they were Clifford the Big Red Dog. It was a bag that we got that was filled with these nodding Cliffords from PBS Kids. They still had the tag on them. Okay. They are from 2003. And I think I got the whole bag of them for maybe five bucks, six bucks or something like that. And I think I got like six or seven in the bag. And nobody was buying them. And I was like, I don't understand this. Because first of all, Clifford the Big Red Dog had a movie that was coming out at Christmas. I thought, yeah. oh, yeah, any of that sort of stuff. But I've had them listed for like two years. Well, finally, we sold one. Just one. I was like, oh, we sold the one. And then I got, I was like, yay, I got the one. I paid for the bag. And that's kind of at the end of the day, all I cared about is I paid for the bag of them all with selling the one. It was, I think, $15 or something like that. But this is what I had to just show you because this is the message we got. Hello. I just wanted to tell you how special this gift was. It's not a gift. You paid for it. To me and my girlfriend. This was her favorite show growing up as a kid on PBS. It was relative, uh, PBS was relatively cheap, if not free service. She loved Clifford. She was born in 2003, and I was born in 2002. So for me to get a bobblehead for her, along with a plushie I got for another seller that was also vintage, was a truly amazing experience. And I greatly appreciate you for giving me the chance to bring something from the year she was born in and her favorite character to life. Clifford now sits on the dashboard of her car, wobbling his head around in excitement. <laughs> she was so happy and loved his little bobbing head. Thank you. Positive review. Hope you get to see this message. Have a great weekend. So That's I thought awesome. that was so neat. So you know yeah. what we're doing? Yeah. I'm sending them another Clifford. 
Because we oh, are. Nice. We're, I'm, we're just pulling. We're pulling out another Clifford, and I'm saying, "Look, you got one in one car. Here's one for the house." Because I thought that was such a nice, like, over the amazing customers. Walk. Yeah. To something that is just to me is like the idea of even saying it's a it was a gift, but thank you for letting us buy. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's just so like when you know if I feel down, I sometimes I will go through my comments, and there's some wonderful comments. I have some amazing repeat customers who are just so happy with the stuff that they get, and it feels good when you provide good service too. You know, like it, you know, I've always said it's like you know, a hundred to one. Unfortunately, you remember that one bad one, and it takes a hundred to make it up. But yes, those hundred yeah. really make a big difference. You know. Yeah. So yeah, it's nice because yeah, a bunch of them. Are just the quick sort of thanks, thanks, thanks. thanks. Those are mine. To be <laughs> yeah. Good yeah, that's mostly mine too. Because it's <laughs> when you're doing it, it's like even when I'm posting my, my feedback for buyers, it's like quick payment, good buyer, like yeah, kind of thing. It's like no. But when you get yeah. the extra little ones, it's nice to read something like mm -hmm. that. And we're sitting at 100 percent positive. And this is from somebody who's again relatively new to eBay. They only had 16 feedback totally, and one of them would have been ours. So I'm just sad they were born in 2003. <laughs> like i remember thinking to the year 2000 how far away that was <laughs> yeah they're not vintage uh, <laughs> they are still not vintage. <laughs> and oh. i'm past antique now so it's like <laughs> i don't know what the the next phase after that is of renaissance i have no clue oh, dear. uh yeah i'm getting getting there i'm getting there uh big shout out by the way to everybody who's joined us here on tuesday night thank you for popping in to hear carl and i spew our little uh, bits of potential knowledge and <laughs> and misfires against everything. Uh, thanks especially as well to everybody who's here who's in the Kennel Club. You got a little icons beside you. That's for supporting us at Two Dogs Digs with everything we try to do for you, uh, including our our Facebook group, the, the private videos, our research deck, all of that. Thank you for all of you. That's $3.99 a month, and you can look at it by looking at the join button on the Two Dogs Digs YouTube channel. But Diana's here. She came early. She was working on stuff, just waiting. Janet, Lisa, Rick is actually here, but he's sitting at the computer across from me here. He's, he's, he's like, very he's very grumpy today. Oh dear, such a he is so grumpy today. That's me last week. They can hear you, hun. Southern uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nelly, <laughs> Brian, Angelique, hey Anne, thanks for popping in. Let's see who else we got here. Joel, Adrian's here. Hey Becky. Uh, Kevin, Lisa, uh, da, 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 there's Rick again, Holly, who else we got here? Uh, that's a, oh yes, Lisa's hunkered down for a blizzard. It's supposed to be the worst. We've heard about that in the Winnipeg area. It's a, they're, they could have up to 36 inches. Oh my God. 80 centimeters in the next few days. It's like, oh, Diana says she stopped selling items for under $15. Hey Don and Sherry. Hey Don. Uh, let's see. Okay. Individual items, maybe not. Multiples, yes, if you got them cheap enough and shipping is easy. Yeah, and that's part of the thing. Yeah. And John says, Carl, you're still not, she's still not used to a clean shaven Carl. <laughs> yeah, my ch chin's gone. There. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got to do a lot more to get this, these chins gone. I know they're not going <laughs> to. Well, I could hide mine before now. <laughs> yeah, I got to. They were really close up for some reason. In that <laughs> <laughs> used to this. You have to hold the camera above your Yeah, head. you have to hold the camera. I have to I've tried to learn to hold the camera above my head instead of below. <laughs> that's been something I've been doing really badly. Yes, Rick needs a more than a cookie. He ate. Um, but no, he needs more than a cookie. And yes, as Holly said, send her back at Clifford. It's exactly what we are doing. Hey Debbie. Um Donna doesn't seem to get enough feedback. She just wish people would comment and leave feedback. <laughs> As Rick is hangry, that's certainly for sure. Hey, there's from a visitor of Charles. Not that I'm does. Chop, chop, busy, busy, work, work, bang, bang. Thanks for popping in. Uh, <laughs> I love that name. I love it. Yeah, it is. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, so even uh, Kevin's going, trying to clear out smalls in his inventory right now. Only th thrift items I can flip for $30 or more. Um and yeah, that's part of the, the comments that we're going to chat a little bit about. So yeah. I thought to give you a perspective on what we where we sit on things, one of the things would be just taking a look at our items. So I told you this week, if you're in our uh, Kennel Club Facebook group, 
uh, for the members were in there. We put a post up that said, we finally reached, because every time we get we got to do something, we sort of hit a mark and sell, it hit a mark and sell. And it's like, good, it's selling, but we never get back to that mark. We were at 1,000 mm-hmm. last September, and we haven't been able to get back to that 1,000 since. We did finally crack the 800 mark again, and I want to say a big congrats to the bunch of people who are in the group who are getting really close to that 1,000 mark. We see a few people who are sitting there in the 950s, just almost at that 1,000 mark. But when we look at what we have, uh, one of the things we look at is we've got over 800 items sitting in there right now. And I wanted to show you that from our standpoint, in our active listings, how many items we have that are actually under $15 uh, US because we list on eBay.com. So to take a look here, this is our filter right now. So this is telling us that when we've got our site of 816 live items right now, we have 275 of those items are under $15 for us. Now, a lot of people would go under, how can you, how can you sell stuff for under $15? Is it worth your while? And this is where I want to show you what, why some things can be worth your while when you're looking at something like that. Yes, Lisa was over a thousand and now down to 970. <laughs> Adrian is only at 130, but it's still, he's got some that he's got to wait and he's, he's working on it. Heather's got over 1700. So Yes, it's quality over quantity, Adrian. That's very true. Hey, Joan. <laughs> um, so $8,000 worth of quote unquote inventory of ours uh, with a total of 851 items. So this is one of the things I want you to take a look at when you're even taking a quick an- analysis of your store, if you happen to be looking at for it on eBay, because that's the place it's easy for us to be able to show you these kind of uh, links versus on our Etsy. On our Etsy side, we have only about... Uh, under 100 items right now um and most of the ones we're trying to put on etsy are over 35 dollars and the reason behind that is actually got to do with etsy's free shipping policy so we list in us dollars on etsy anything listed over 35 dollars with free shipping gets pushed by Mm -hmm. etsy's service so we have 20 dollar 25 dollar items but we've listed them at 35 (laughs) dollars including free shipping so that we actually can get a little bit better on there. But on the eBay side of things, we have those 275 items, but there's a quantity of 851 of those. So that means that you can see that a lot of the stuff we have has multiple quantities. And even if you go down the side here, you can see under available quantity. If I click on this just to do a sort for us and see what I've got here, I have click on the other way around. So I've got a number of ones and that's usually when I've broken something out. But here's a perfect example. This rib cotton fabric that we have, we have a quantity of 136. And that's because it's rolls of fabric that we cut into pieces. Uh, On these teddy bear prints, we have 69 of them because we've got 25 different prints with three different quantity of three on each one of them. So a lot of these, when we see even the brush tees, 45 of those, We've got pre-cut yarn, 15 of those. So there's a lot of things that have higher quantities on them when we have a quantity of items available to them. This Care Bears is a perfect example. I've got 10 of them listed. We've got 4,000 views. We've sold probably about $100 with this. And this is one of the things that I wanted to bring up is when you're looking at stuff that's smaller or lower priced and you can find things that are in quantities, that's where sometimes it can actually end up being a benefit to you. Maybe not everybody, but to us. And I'm going to show you something right now that's exactly in that mind. Literally five days ago, we were at a value village and on the baggy wall, there was these four, three bags of these. And they were hard to see, but I grabbed them and I I emptied them out now, but they are A&W root beer Christmas mugs. So they're Christmas ornaments and they're brand new. Mm-hmm. Little plastic ornaments. I thought they were cute. Two ninety nine a baggie, and the bag had six, so that's fifty cents each. So I bought the three bags. It happened to be the only thing I picked up at the store that day, so I used a two dollar coupon on it too. So it cost me like nine bucks Canadian, seven bucks US for eighteen mugs. I posted them with Rick's help taking the photos. Within an hour, I sold one. For twelve dollars and eighty-eight cents U.S. plus four fifty in shipping, so I had one item that sold, and actually 
paid for every other one of these I've got. So now I have 17 more <laughs> of these that I get to easily box up. May sell more of them closer to Christmas. You never know. May be able to sell some at $9.98, $10 instead of $12.88. I could take offers on them if I see people liking them. And for me, this is where it made sense to me to go just like this Care Bear Oopsie that I bought. I think it was three bags that had maybe 60 of these things inside them. And they were still in their little baggies. So it was good to find something where there was a quantity that maybe one or two of the items that I had actually paid for every single thing. So now I got a bunch of free stuff. So that's one way to think about it and go, okay. But the big thing you got to think about there is, are you getting your ship? Where's your shipping coming from? And don't forget you have fees. That's And that's one of the things that yeah. I can't figure out for the life of me on some people's listings. I think it's really important, especially for Canadians too, is that when we pay fees on eBay, it's not just on the selling price, it's on the shipping price, shipping cost. And if your shipping cost is high, you're paying a lot more fees than you might even realize on the total value of the good if you just look at how much it sells. Well, everybody's paying that those fees on shipping through eBay, right? Right, but the more the rate, the, the worse the ratio is, yes. the less of the potential. If if your shipping costs are correct, the less potential profit you're going to actually make with that item, too, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, some people actually put their shipping as the exact amount that the shipping is going to cost, mm -hmm. and forget that they're paying fifteen percent on top of that to eBay. Right. So if your shipping is 20 bucks and then you're selling that item for 10, you're paying the fees on the full 30. And I don't think you should be selling that type of item. That's a, no, that's a, that, that's a very good point. It's like, that's where you have to watch it. And that's always something even with smaller and lower priced items you want to watch. And especially for those of us in Canada, because mm -hmm. you've got to take that look out for, if you don't have access to a cross border shipper as a perfect example, you can't send something that's bulky in a flat rate padded envelope or you can't send it through like the slot of the slot of doom <laughs> for canada post yeah and it has to go as a package and here's one i actually found and carl and i were looking at this from just before we started on here and it was like what the heck is this this is somebody's listing uh in canada and they have listed not even an auction a PJ Mask mini toy figure for 78 cents and an Iron Man figure for 78 cents. This Iron Man figure they have listed for 78 cents. Guess what? It's 99 cents. They'll even take an offer <laughs> on this 98 cent figure. Yeah, that's just a, for me, that's just also a waste of time. Well, that's just it. That's one of the things that you wonder is at what point are these things being a waste of time for this person? They have, and this particular thing, let's, I, I, I know, well, let's see, we'll see the other items this person may have on. They have uh, 143 followers. And if we go to lowest items for prices on lowest items, they have spent time, one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, all Pictures. of these items they're listing yeah. Yeah. are 78 cents. I don't understand it because it's like you can't just think of the cost of the item that you paid for. Like I hear sometimes people say profit is profit, but you know, I make the joke of rot, you know, return on your time. You have to take pictures oh. of that. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> you have to take pictures of that. You have to deal with customer issues. You have to deal with customer questions. You have to, if, if they're putting them through the envelope, maybe they're really small. Maybe they can put it through their local slot somehow. You have to put the address on. You have to write it down. Like all, all that takes time. Yeah. And well, and that, they've got time. a six dollar. They got six dollar shipping yeah. to the U.S. because as I'm looking on the U.S. side of this, and with that six dollar shipping, where is the bubble envelope or the mylar envelope that they're getting? Where, like, where are that? Where's that extra fifteen cents coming from? Where, like, like all this costs money. That yeah. And people forget that because it doesn't come off the item. But you know, a box bumble bubble uh, uh wrapping paper and you know craft paper like this like i assume at least a dollar per item is going to yeah. be in, in cost of the supplies but because it's separate we kind of we can forget about that sometimes right um 
And that, I think that's one of the challenges is you look at that and go, they, they've got 50 to 100 items that they're listing for 99 cents each. And that's 50 to 100 items they had to write a listing up for. Yeah. That's 50 to 100 items they had to take a photo for. That's 50 to 100 items they may have to pack. And they're going to make 99 cents each on them. So and that's, it takes that's, away from time for other things they could be doing. Yeah. Right? Which Now, I know some of these, these places, they have high volume and they're real experts at that. And they're very different than we are at much more of a, you know, I'm not going to say casual level, but, you know, we don't have a big warehouse full of <laughs> no. importing and exporting and stuff like that. And that's kind of a different, uh, different game. No, but they that actually those people actually have thirty five hundred listings. Yeah. They only have one hundred and thirty six feedback, so they haven't been doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. But thirty five hundred feedback, uh, thirty six hundred listings is a lot of photos, a lot of write ups for things to go on. Even when you look at things like this, this is somebody else that I just picked up, and uh, they put a sale on this item, and it is a set of three cars, toy cars, for seven dollars. And now they're actually going to put it on for $3.50 and $5 shipping, economy shipping on this. So they're, they're shipping they're going to pay for. But at the end of the day, that $8.50 they're going to make on this, they're going to take that $8.50 and they're going to pay eBay roughly 15%. Hopefully it wasn't promoted listings or it would be more than that. 15 yeah. to 16% of that price is going to go for that. And then if they count like Carl's doing, a buck for that box, the bubble wrap, the time, and nothing against their time, they've just sold something for nothing. So I don't understand it. It's a mystery to me, but there's quite a few of those out there. But yeah. I think for us, it's really important to steer away from anything like that for us. Because yeah. All that film. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that, yeah, that's showing uh, you're a little in the vintage area too. <laughs> I think you know low value items can have a like like you said before. If you have a high uh, number of quantity at the low value, and you take that one picture and you sell it over and over and over and over again, and you have a quick way of shipping that item out. Because what I love is when like I was going to show, like when I sell something like this, I won't sell this cheap anymore. Because I, right. I can't just put this in a bubble envelope because it's going to get dented. I feel I have to put this in some plastic wrap. Maybe not. but And I can't just put this in a bubble envelope. Like I said, it's going to get dented. So now I need to make the box. Now I need to take the tape. And i got to wrap it. And now, because it's this size, I have to put tissue in here. For me, I'd rather spend that time on, on other things. Uh, rather than yeah, Becky is making the point is that you're saying... There's so many fixed costs listing every item. It takes the same time to photograph a ten dollar sale yeah. item as a hundred dollar listing. It takes the same uh, the same time to ship a ten dollar item as a hundred dollar item. Um, and it, that's true. And that's the, one of the things that we want people to think about. But again, that doesn't mean that ten dollar items are something that you should necessarily avoid. And again, we're looking at our, as our side from our our business perspective we found a lot of items that we've done really well with, with big quantities that we've sold thousands of dollars worth of stuff over the course of the years because the, we just happened to find something good. Like again, that fabric, the corduroy fabric, that's just, it's fabric ribbon. These rolls that I found at a Valley Village were literally like that round. We still, I bought like, I think must've been like, Fifteen total rolls of different colors, um, and every and we sell them in ten inches. So I, we cut a ten inch piece off and sell it for seven dollars. A twenty inch piece for twelve dollars. And again, we sold a thousand dollars worth of stuff, even though it was a two hundred dollar investment. That just becomes an easy okay. Someone just bought some, cut off, rip, like slice yeah. envelope gone. So that's one of the things that makes sense to us. Uh, the the Care Bears is another example of something that we've got. We have bought uh, paper labels that we've sold tons of, as I, I think I mentioned. Um, this the inflatable me was something that we bought years ago. This inflate like these are all things that are actually 
Lissa, let me just go into uh, our solds to give you a, uh, an idea there. Paid and shipped. So this is paid and shipped. And this is items that we've done, again, in the past little while that have are all lower value. So there, uh, there's syrup labels, brush tea, a Gundam model for $9, an Ikea catalog that we just got with a bunch of stuff. It was a quick picture. Um, the Red Rose Tea stuff, we thought we're going to take a little time. It was a baggie that we paid very little for, but we broke it into 12 different photos and mm. we're made, we made our $3.99 back on it. Our so present that's really interesting, there. Cause that, uh, So back to the Red uh, Rose thing. Yeah. So there we might actually, I've started treating those sort of items differently now that I prefer putting them into lots because what I don't want to do is have one item sell to a person and then I have to do all that work for one item and then I might make six bucks off of it or seven bucks. At most, right. Right. So what I've been doing, especially with things like I was going to show with, with uh, Thomas, the train stuff, right? Yeah. For each one might sell for like 10 bucks with shipping. What I used to do is just cherry pick the nice ones and put those up. But what I'm doing now is instead of making, you know, five bucks say off of each one, let's just, I'm just making up a number. Yeah. Yeah. And selling 10 of them. I'd rather sell uh, 10 of them and make three bucks, but sell the entire lot at once. Because even though I'm making less per item, I'm actually making a lot more with my rot principle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm actually making a lot more money and a lot less frustration and time. Well, and so with some of that stuff, like non-quantity stuff, I'd rather lot it up and make less per item. And that's and I'll, tell, I'll tell you, though, I agree with you right. on that principle completely. What we did, though, and this we had two baggies that were, in this case, of the Red Rose tea figurines. And one bag had a bunch of loose ones, and one bag had a bunch of bagged ones that were still brand new and mint. Yeah. So we put the bagged ones up with only two photos. One, two. Boom, boom. Yeah. And we bulk lot the others together. So the others we put in the bulk lot and said, okay, here's 10 of them that I might be able to sell for, I could possibly sell them for six dollars each but i just put the whole batch in to go well how's the whole batch of them for like 25 bucks and so i agree with you in some of the cases like smaller things or smaller profit items when you can bulk them up it could make a lot of sense for you and sometimes we even try that with auctions too because we were big auction proponents uh we literally just did something with a uh game a nerfles uh, thing that we I think we talked about this last week or yep. two, and we broke it down into all these things. Well, we ended up getting somebody who bought two pieces, another person bought two pieces, then that person, the first person who bought two pieces, bought three more pieces. So they got all bulked together, and now I'm left with three or four things. So I'm gonna right, they were ten dollars each. Well, I'm gonna take all three of them now, just move the pictures into one lot instead of having a bunch of nine dollar items that are gonna cost ten dollars to ship because they're the big pieces. Yeah, and I'll move that into one thing to try and get rid of it for twenty five bucks, and make I'd rather make as you said the twenty dollars off of it in one shot. That's one way you can raise up your average selling cost, which can be a really good thing for you in general. Now Rick is looking at me like he's got a point that he wants to make, oh, and he's just... holding paper up and everything like that. I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be part of this. And now <laughs> he's now he's handling it to me. So. Remember, I downloaded the report for 2020. Yeah. I just did a quick calculation of the total number of sales we had, which was the 1,830 number. Yeah. So we had in 2020, we had nearly 2,000 total sales. Of our 2,000 total sales, 800 of them were between 10 and $20. So that was like $15,000 in sales right. from 10 or $20 items. Now that's, again, that's not including the fees. Yeah, yeah that's gross. Yeah, That's gross. Yeah. But it's not that gross when, <laughs> when it's right. things in our case that we found for very little money or we're trying to flip for a lot low money. And that's one of the other things too, is you gotta remember if it's something of yours, like we always say like, if, if it's something you used, something you 
had for 20 years. So like you open it. I opened a drawer the other day. And when I open this drawer, I, I look inside it. And what do I end up finding inside the drawer uh, was um, a set of pen inks, like ink cartridges for a pen. Um, not only the ink cartridge for a pen, but three old um, uh, chips. This is, this is what I found. Poker chips. Poker chips. Three old poker chips, two old poker chips, and some Norwegian cruise line pins that we had from when we went on some cruises. Mm. They're all free to me because they're all 10 plus years old. They didn't, like, I don't have any money in it. I posted these. The poker chips sold for $20 in less than a day. The uh, pin sold for $20 in an auction. <laughs> so it's like... Great. 20 bucks is fine. Like that's but they were but I still had to pay for my I still had to pay my five dollars in total in, in fees on that, 20, 25 percent total of fees or whatever, but it still was fifteen dollars that was free. So it wasn't even any money in it to me. I think like for me, this criteria that I'll have for items that I want to sell at the 10 to 15, really the fifteen dollar one, it should have very little to no testing. If if it's an if it's an item um it's not doesn't work well in lots so like the classic example for me is the remote control is very easy testing but right. i can sell someone multiple remotes <laughs> right but the remote can just go in the, into this and i can quickly print off the the uh the shipping thing so it's still worth it even if it does sell for the 15 bucks plus shipping um yeah but you can't bulk up a bunch of remotes that don't sell exactly so i don't pick up but for me i'm willing to pick up those even though the uh, the net might be low on it, the ROT on it <laughs> right. is very high because there's very little work to do with a remote. So what you've done is you've sort of adjusted your business model to one that goes, I don't, my general model is one that says, I want things that are higher value, low time, higher value, higher sale price. Lazy, right? And yeah. I, but I won't negate something that i know flips well mm -hmm. i can buy pretty cheap packs easy like things like that so you're still doing converters remote controls i mean that you might find for 2.99 and selling it for 15 dollars. yeah so yeah. that's so, what I mean. so, and, and they're small they don't take up a lot of storage space right that's the other thing i don't have a lot invested in them um and there's demand right yeah, so you've got something that's that's actually selling. You're knowing I'm going to sell these things. So if I can sell them easily, they don't sit around for a year. It's not like you're waiting for something to sit around for a year. And you get to the point where you are also knowing I'm not going to pick up any random remote. Oh God, I'm no, gonna, no, no. I have a certain list of these are the remotes that I pick up. I mean, you, did, you made a really good point actually uh, yesterday uh, uh, or Monday. Yesterday was Monday on your show because you were talking about. Um, the Sony, the like the Walkmans, and yeah. that you've pretty well given up on those, or was it, it might have yeah. been last week? But yeah. that you were that we talked about, it, and it was like it's something you've given up on because it's too much effort, and you're not making. It's not necessarily. A, it's not a quick, fast return to you. It's a pain. Now I'm not giving them up completely, but anything under forty bucks, I'm not even going to touch. Yeah, so you again, you're learning to move around and say, "Here's my threshold." And that kind of leads a little bit into our our back half discussion, mm -hmm. which is how do you start raising prices or raising things that are higher? Because that's actually been one of the biggest challenges. Um, but I just want to see a couple of things people yep. put in here. Like Becky said, a couple of years ago, she made close to three thousand dollars <laughs> selling hot Cheetos. I remember. Buying each for a dollar twenty nine and sold for five dollars over and bundles of six. Yeah, and again, that's a great thing because if you've got something you can buy for six bucks and sell for thirty, that I think that's part of what Carlo you're saying is there's things you can find all the time. You do that. I literally just bought something that I don't even know what's going to happen with it. We picked up uh, through a Facebook, just a Facebook post. Somebody actually put up um, a bag a huge bag and it said bag of amusement tokens uh, and it was five bucks and i went a bag of amusement what the heck is a bag of amusement tokens i looked at them i couldn't even see the picture was horrible yeah i, I don't know what the heck this is oh well it's five bucks like this is me i go and i buy something for five bucks and i have no idea what the heck it is 
Well, I picked it up for five bucks, and it, it is actually a, a gigantic margarine tin filled with um, these tokens. Let me pop into here. These oh, tokens. Right. Yeah. That just say one pail and the Tilbury Canning Company Limited. And they're, you can see, they're in some are in horrid shape, mm. disgusting shape. So, what did I do as a joke? I listed 10 of them on auction for $20 and we got a bid already. <laughs> That's all. Awesome. I probably have. I don't know, five hundred of these right now. Oh, that's crazy! Yeah, those are the, those are the rare ones, but they're they're fun. That's right? my that's my snack Cheetos. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think Becky made a really good point. I'm willing to make uh, less return on investment on an item if I know they will flip faster or they are easier to sell. Yeah, that's that's why it's so hard sometimes just to make up rules for this stuff. Um, yeah. But again, that's one of it's just one of the things that again I wanted just to chat about because we see so many items that are listed for ten dollars or less. I see auctions for ninety nine cents now. eBay used to be a place twenty years ago where a ninety nine cent auction would be good. In fact, at eBay Open four years ago, we met a guy who had his own service and it was he was actually on the eBay podcast as well. And he used to auction things for ninety nine cents, and he listed about two hundred items. I think he said a week. Mr. Customer, Mr. Customer Service. And he started them at 99 cents. But he said he had now moved up to 4.99. <laughs> because it was literally taking it like 200 items every week he would clear out all like he'd clear them all out but it started to get to the point where he's clearing them all out and at 99 cents it was not a lot of it was too much effort to clear to pack 200 things. One of my best friends for thrifting is like that he likes the auctions and he's old school but i think he's leaving a lot of money on the table to be honest because uh the problem with the auctions is you have to hope the right person comes along you need two of them to bid against each other yeah or you set your goal of i want this as my minimum that's what I, again that's the way oh, yeah. we always say because like, if we set a minimum and then we go if there if we get a fight that's fine like on those tokens i don't care if someone else bids if they do yay yeah but if they don't, I'm happy with selling one pair at night at like 20 bucks. And and then again, I paid for all my other stock and everything like that. Adrian's made the comment. He's done that. He he has toy soldiers. And every time he lists them, he can sell them. Yeah. But it's other stuff that he finds and buys or that he's picked up at a max sold. And it's like, what do I do with this? And puts it on. And that's the stuff that's six months later, it's still sitting there and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I don't mind so much if stuff stays around for a while, but I do purge my store. <laughs> yeah, and we um, do we do that as well, and especially because we got Max sold, we're doing that as well too. Because you're talking about the number of listings, and that's important. But I would say the the average value of those listings is important too. You don't want to just get your numbers up for the sake of getting your numbers up too. No. Um, so, like, what I. I still track how many listings I have every month, but I also track how much the total value of my inventory is up, is is valued at. And I want to see that number go up much more so than the actual number of listings I have. Yeah. I mean, last year, when we look at our 2020 count, we only had uh, 25% of our items sold for $30 or higher. So that'll be my goal over the course of the year is trying to go, how do I raise that up? But this is, and I, I, so wait a second, so hi to Susan and hi to Linda, who are late, <laughs> but you're still here. Uh, thanks for popping in. Um, but again, that's probably one of the challenges. And you made a comment, this was yesterday. I know this was yesterday in your listing show, which I thought was a really interesting way of considering something. But that's what I wanted to ask you. Uh, how do you figure out how to raise your average selling price. Because the first thing people think about is to raise your average selling price. Oh, I just want to sell things that are $50 or higher. Well, I'm sorry. I can't thrift those. I would be buying nothing if I actually had to say I can only list $50 items or higher. I Right now, even, I've been honing down and honing down from things that are trying to make sure that I've got good turnover items or unique or hard to find items or like one of a kind, things like that. So that when I'm going out to buy there, I'm not buying every Monopoly game that's out there anymore just to sell the tokens. Um, 
but how do you, those aren't $30 items. Those aren't $50 right. items. So how do you, how do you look at doing something? How would you raise mm. that? So my average selling cart price has been increasing and that's on purpose one by purging the low end stuff, but in terms of sourcing, I don't do arbitrage. So that can screw up your stats because with arbitrage, your volume is much higher, but your net is much lower on generally than if stuff are going to get at the thrift stores. So one way is like I've already mentioned is by doing more lots, making less per item. But when the sale happens, I get rid of a whole bunch of stuff at once to one person, one box, one customer, one picture set, all that stuff. So I've been really heading towards that more and more. And one way I do that is I've this lost the sheet already. Oh, here it is. So I do stuff like this. Yep. See the prices there? Thomas, right? Hey, I move you over there so you got bigger picture. Well, I do stuff like this. And see, those are all the values of things to sell for approximately, including shipping in US, right? Okay. So, because I come across Thomas a lot. And what I can decide is I'm not going to sell something for like that 15 bucks for that philosophy you already mentioned, right? Yep. And I can decide what do I want to lot together to make an average selling price if it sells high enough um, that I'm not upset about having to ship that off to someone. No, that that's I mean, no, that's I hadn't really thought about that because we could actually increase our average selling price on a lot of things like that because we do split out our strawberry shortcakes into a bunch of smaller things, and I could probably bring my average price up by going, I could put all this stuff together and charge $50 and people wouldn't even think twice about spending $50. But right now I will sell a pair of Barbie shoes for $15. Right. So you have to make the decision because my high, my net pair item is going to be lower than you. Like if we, if you do your way and I do my way for those uh, Barbie shoes, right. And I sell mine in a lot. Well, my average selling price is going to be higher than yours because I'm selling them in a big lot. But you're going to make more per item. Yeah. So you have to kind of decide what you want. And for me, since I'm the lazy reseller, I just want to put things in one box and send it off and make less per item. Um, but you have to know what... Or sometimes when you buy something, you'll cherry pick. You know? So, like, I bought a bunch of Thomas today, right? None of this was cherry picked. It was just low enough value that I figured it was worth buying this. Right. There's a chance there's something good in here, but even if there isn't, they, it's worth it for me to lock this up. But when I was just holding on to these as one, trying to sell one at a time for like fifteen or twenty bucks, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't listing it. it so with that time. with that lot is like that was a bag lot you got for five ninety nine. Yeah. So you're going to put that up as a lot now and probably try and price it at like 30 or 40. No. So what I'll do is look at my little list, my cheap list, right. see what the values are. And maybe I'll put like eight of them together and try to sell them for, instead of 10 bucks each, I'll sell it all for like 59.99 or something. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that otherwise it stays in my death pile forever for one. We're actually, we're going to try that because I literally just picked up a bunch of Polly Pocket, not the original Polly Pockets, but the second unit you know, from early 2000s where they were the larger dolls with the rubber yeah, yeah, yeah. clothing and everything on them. Yeah. And I find those quite a lot. Yeah. But normally, again, with something like that or a batch of the strawberry shortcakes, I think we'll try this, is we would normally go, okay, this doll, this shoes, this, the... And, and Too much time. So I'm going to take all four bags that I bought. And I yeah. bought all four bags for 10 bucks. They were like $2.99 a bag. I'm going to put them into one lot. But I'll cherry pick. I'll cherry pick that lot first. See, I won't because I, I have to do research. So I'm going to take research. you. I'm, I'm going to take you right to the end and go. I don't want to put more time into rot. Yes, but research for cherry picking is a hundred percent worth it. You know, Not like, necessarily on something that you don't know. You know Thomas. You've got I'm that more research. More knowing this stuff. See, here's my here's my bolo book, <laughs> where I put all the things. That are worth looking for, and I memorize it, or I have it actually on a little frame in front of me. See, here's um, TMNT. Yeah. Very big ones. Because I still want it out of that bag. I still want to know 
what are the ones worth 50 or 100 bucks? They will still sell those separately. See, and again, that's a different, it's a, your strategy is a little different than mine because I use oh, yeah. this strategy. Well, no, I've yeah. used this strategy before. I understand what you're saying. And I personally yeah. use that strategy on things that I know, but I don't know. I know old Polly Pocket. I do not know 2000s Polly Pocket. I don't want to be trying to go into a rabbit hole of researching a bunch of rubber clothes just to find out I might have the princess dress that's worth $20. That's just like, if you recall back about a year ago, I sold those Lego lots of knights and soldiers yeah, like and that. got like 120 bucks and could not figure it out. And finally, someone told me it was the white feather on one hat that was on yeah. Lego brick links for like $85. So I so kind of let yeah. that, again, yeah. in an area I may not necessarily want to dive deep into, I will let somebody else look at it. And if they can find a deal on it, that's great, but I'm still going to make the money I want. Again, I will auction this. These have the names on them. Easy. Well, no, and again, but I just again, but you've done Thomas before. I haven't. The, I'm talking. If I gave you yeah. Polly's, you wouldn't necessarily go and deep dive into Polly Pockets or anything like that. I would. All the time. Well, I you well, again, but that's that's counter to you saying that I don't want to put too much time into something. You might not. You may avoid it completely because it's something that you don't know, right? But I think it's worth putting time into research into stuff you see a lot of. Right. I see a lot of Thomas. <laughs> I, see, I see a lot of toy. Giggling at rubber clothes. <laughs> I see a lot of knights. I, lo I see a lot of remotes. <laughs> you know, and what I do is if I see a lot of something at a store, I'll take a picture of it and research it later. That's, well, that's actually one of the comments you made yesterday I was going to bring up as well. And I thought that was a really brilliant sourcing idea is something that you've seen a lot of. And you were talking about a specific kind of calculator or printing calculator. And you seem to see a lot of them. So you're actually not just, you're not buying them at the beginning, but you're going, wait a second. These, I'm seeing a lot of these. So you're taking pictures of them, then going back, doing research, and then being able to say, okay, I know if I find pioneer printing calculators, those are worth grabbing. I decided so, if it's worth learning the category. Yeah. Right. Um, so, and why it's relevant to this value stuff is that some of the stuff I make the most value of and most money off of, I should say, is. Barbara the, wants you to sell your bowl of book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's called eBay Solds. It's all there. <laughs> but, you know, I really think it's worth knowing the valuable and the invaluable with exceptions. Like, you know, the Shopkins you had? And yep. I said, let's give me instant headache. I won't bother with that. It's just overwhelming. Right. right. Um, Heather made a book like that for Higgins glasses. Yeah, it's your own, it's it's your own way um, of trying to figure out. And again, that's why I'm saying some people work one way, and I'm just saying I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. saying like there's some things that you can and cannot do. I'm taking Carl's thing, but I'm not gonna do the research side on something I really don't want to know a lot about. I'm basically doing this as a test for me as a buyer, as a reseller and going, I see bags of Polly Pocket rubber clothes all the time. If I don't want to spend time on them, I'm going to try and dump them together as opposed to picking it all apart. I know that with some of my strawberry shortcake dolls, I could sell a pair of shoes for 10 bucks. I yeah. could do the same with a Barbie doll. I can pick out a shoe and sell it for 20, 30, $40. And I will pick out that shoe and sell it for 20, 30 or $40. But I will also lot up a bunch of Ken shoes because I know none of them have value. But somebody yeah, will give yeah. me $25 for a bunch of Ken shoes. So it's again, it's where you want to focus on and what you want to learn about. Skylanders is a Carl thing. I haven't learned enough about it. So for me, investing in it is one thing to try and build my, even to think about it as lots. Like I think that's a really interesting strategy though that I hadn't really thought about, which is, to get higher overall sales, lot up things. And I think, um, I was just saying, Sherry made a comment earlier about, and I don't know whether this would work or not, um, but she had a comment before about she has a bunch of uh, cross-stitch kits. Now, I don't know, I am, personally, I, the first thing I think of too is I gotta sell every cross-stitch kit on its own, even if it's $9, even if it's $12. But I never thought about putting a bunch of, cross stitch kits together mm. that I may only pay nine dollars or like nine dollars for all of them and trying to list them for 50 bucks and making that as you said making that 30 or 40 dollar profit in one shot simple yeah. it's simple to ship anything like that yeah and it's all not all pluses and minuses those lots are gonna be slower to sell 
Carl just, or Kevin just did a, a lot enough of sale. Twelve items yesterday, selling all for one hundred and seventy-five versus twelve listings. Right. So, um, like I said, it can be slower to sell though because not everyone wants everything in that lot. But you know, it's not. <laughs> don't, 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 don't explode, please! Don't explode. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's again. It's just trying to think process wise. Right. Watch one of the biggest challenges is people putting in a lot of time and effort into low price stuff that we've talked about this in a couple of other shows before. One, it was the show we said where 20% of your stuff doesn't sell. So, like, you got to remember that you're putting time and effort into things that, in some cases, will never sell. So, you don't want to put time, you can put time and effort if you want. I have a perfect example. I have a Full, it's like this big, it's an eye chart, right? And it's a clock that's and it's a uh brown, sort of clear plastic retro 1970s uh law tall clock that was made to look like an eye chart. And at the top of it, there's actual clock, so it's probably for an optometrist's office. Unique for sure, it has not sold. I that one person that wanting that, yeah, nobody <laughs> wants it yet, but. I mean, I picked it up. I've listed it yeah, at like yeah. 60, 70, 80, 90, 200. I don't know what. And it's not going anywhere. So sometimes I pick stuff up that I have no idea about. And I'll keep it for a longer time. But I'm not trying to do that with a $9 item. Like I'm purging a lot more. Like Carl's saying, I'm going through my stuff now once a month. I'm taking time to go through and go, okay, well, here's 10 things that are under 10 bucks that they got to go. Because they've just been sitting around a long time. But I won't say they got to go for those fruit syrup labels because they take up no space and i have 800 of them left <laughs> oh, yeah. that's those are the great things but we don't find those all the time of course so no um you know i think everyone has to decide for themselves what they want to do i don't i think everyone could do things a little different. <laughs> yeah yeah i think also the ish the one last thing i would say about that too is if you spend your time looking for the 10 to $15 items. Sometimes you'll stop yourself from learning the 50 to $60 ones. That's think, actually an excellent point is trying to learn the things that you can move up the ladder a little bit more in. Yeah, I know yeah, one thing you that go to the store and you find a bunch of stuff you think you've done really well, but it's all, it's all the low value stuff that you've become very comfortable with and you're kind of stuck in the rut with, and maybe you should be letting that stuff go. Which is hard when you've learned something too. Yeah. Well, it's also when you, what, whatever time you got. I mean, if you're a part time uh, seller and you're looking at this to get a little bit extra money and it's fun for you to do some thrifting, yeah, that's a different sort of strategy that you would have than if you're a full time reseller and this is where you're making your money and you need to, that's where, again, you have to, every one of the things adjusts individually. That's why we always mm -hmm. say there's no right way to become a reseller, there's no wrong way. There's no place that you need to shop. There's no place you can't shop. People will bitch and complain about Value Village and pricing. It's like, you know what? I can find and bitch and complain about Value Village pricing, but I can also bitch and complain about Walmart's pricing. I can bitch and complain about Toys R Us and EB Games pricing. I can do the same about Salvation Army and Goodwill. But I also can shop at those places and look for things that I know that I can flip. And I am doing that my part-time business of reselling, I am still finding things at Value Village that I'm thinking are well-priced. And I see the things that I think are overpriced gone two days after I saw them the last time in there. So somebody is buying that, whether they're buying it personally or buying it to flip. But if you're buying it to flip, we just want you to keep that thing in mind. Remember, anything you buy to flip, you almost think about it as double it and that's the price it's going to cost you to sell it and pay for the packing and pay for your time and everything like that. So if you find a $4 baggie and you think you're going to try and list it for $10, you're not paying yourself enough time, not especially enough. if it takes six months to flip. So, but if you find a $20 shirt or pair of pants or purse or China set or things like that, that you can go, wait, I can buy this and I can flip it for 40 or 60 or 80 or 100. Yeah, learn. Some, and that's why we always say try and learn some of those extra things. Like Carl, the one thing Carl's taught me that I have not heeded his advice on yet is on the Skylanders as a perfect example. He knows certain Skylanders are still worth money. 
I tried to learn a bit about them, and then I just went, not for me. Now, I know I still pick up every baggie I see, and I see them a lot because <laughs> they're everywhere. But I've everyone I pick up and try and look up, because I don't have Carl's binder, uh, soon for sale, available for sale at Carl's <laughs> uh, I don't have that binder. So I'm looking at stuff, and I'm using Google Images, and then I realize I have now spent 25 minutes with a bunch of stuff that I know nothing about. And most of this stuff says that it's not worth anything to sell. So that's a hell of it. So I haven't that's my research at home. That's why yeah. I take the picture. That's well, again, that's a smarter idea that, of researching at home. But so it's, it's those, are the kind of things it's think about those. I'm not sure. Craig equals Hamilton, Craig equals spam a lot. I'm not sure which I've seen them both. Spam a lot. I've actually seen a bunch more times than Hamilton. though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bob will pick up a hundred dollar vase and Heather will pick up an eight dollar plush. Rick will pick up a twenty-five dollar teacup, and I will pick up seven bags of what he thinks is a bunch of crappy stuff from the toy wall. Yeah. So yeah. I don't comment it's... on your crappy stuff. You do comment on my crappy <laughs> stuff. You do. You go, what did you bring home now? I make mistakes um, all the time too. No, it it's always going to be there. Yeah. You don't. No, you don't. That's true. You do not call it crappy. Oh, <laughs> Elisa says my speech reminds her of a soliloquy from a Broadway musical. I'll put it to music, and I'll <laughs> I'll sell my CDs on baddogfromtwodogsticks.com, or maybe Carl will sell them on carlloisyreseller.com a lot. Or it's a free gift with purchase when you per <laughs> when you buy his bolo book, you'll get fabulous songs from Bad Dog from Two Dogs Dick. No. <laughs> yeah. I Did I show this corny thing I have going? I got bought one of those cheap digital frames. And what I have on the digital frame is wait, that's not that picture. You can't show that picture. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. It's so slow. It's so slow. Dead air space. I ah, see. There. It shows me my bolos so that it can get into my head. Because I'm very visual. I'm a very visual person, right? So you have to find what works for you, though, because I, I don't know. I, I really you've already know. sent me, you've already, I've already spent so much time in the damn cookware aisle because of you last week hey. with your $600 pot. I'm like, every time I'm in now, I'm like walking through the cookware aisle and looking and looking going, I know I'm looking for interesting handles. Now, and all I can seem to find is really dented and stained Lagostina crap. Yeah, that's not, but I found Luke Crusade. Too bad it wasn't perfect. It would be a two hundred dollar uh, pot, but you know. no, I I did, yeah, I did pick this up. Ah, I'm cool. It's a dance. Oh, dance. Yeah, pot. okay. So it's a, but again, I wouldn't have even looked in that aisle if it hadn't have been for you. That's that's probably about a forty dollar uh, pot. Yeah. So yeah, it's not. Bad. And I paid eight dollars for it, but that, again, that's also watching. You don't want to raise up. Well, it depends on where you go, because, again, when you talk about arbitrage and buying things, one of the things that we've actually done quite successfully is we've been purchasing stuff like our Hallmark ornaments that we purchase, and we do a lot of seasonal stuff where we're finding things that actually are costing us. We're putting an outlay yes. of $50 and $60 on an item, but we're selling that item for 100 150 Two hundred dollars. Yeah, arbitrage is very different. So it's a very different animal, mm -hmm. but you can make money, and so that's oh, the reason we did it. We actually purchased a couple of things uh, on Boxing Day, mm -hmm. um, and we went out and specifically purchased some Christmas uh, items that were caught. That we probably put a thousand dollars into inventory that we hope to make at the end of the day probably close to five thousand to seven thousand dollars on. Yeah, um, we may not make most of it until next october november right but it's a way for you to also raise your average selling price we are raising our costs mm. it's not like we can thrift a bunch of things for a buck or two bucks or five bucks at flea markets or garage sales or estate sales and flip them for a hundred that's i think that's the biggest misconception a lot of people think is they're gonna have to go and spend forty dollars at a thrift store on a forty dollar thrift store item and try and get a hundred dollars for it that's where it becomes there aren't that many of those out there. No, it's very different. Like arbitrage, selling on Amazon, selling on eBay, all very different. You can't even use the same formulas. And honestly, when I'm at the thrift stores, I don't even look at the price. I look at the value first. 
because the price is easy. Our margins are so high that the cost of goods is actually fairly low. Now, with asterisks for some things, <laughs> but yeah, I don't worry about it. I can't control it anyways. Don was saying the photos are a passive way to get it into your brain. It's she thinks it's kind of genius. It depends on your personality. I I'm visual. I need to see it visually. It won't stick in here if I don't see it visually. And this is very passive. It's right in here. I don't do anything. It's not like a, any work. Yeah, it works for me. Where it might not work for someone else who has a really good memory, which I don't have. You know. So I think I mean the main thing that we were trying to get across. And hopefully you got a little bit of this from both of us today. Is hearing different ways to look at it. But one is it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't still sell $10 items or $15 items and make a good amount of money on them. I mean, I I think I saw a point from Becky earlier on, uh, Becky, the jewelry queen, that uh, she's, her, her average sale or something like that was in the $35 range. So she's selling $10 items and she's selling $1,500 items at the same time. So you can have an average sale that's that area. Uh, recently, last week, I remember watching um, Katie and Vicky's show on Sundays at five o'clock, their hall show, and they both show their weekly sales. And both of them had their average ticket price was, uh, I think, over fifty dollars an item. And so they're looking at things. They're they're buying stuff in a lot of their cases. They're clothing oriented, but they're they're selling like one T-shirt she bought for seven dollars at Buffalo Exchange. She sold for I think three hundred dollars. So. Those things help you as well. But yeah, jewelry is a great item, something like that. Um, Elise is asking for a subliminal MP3. Of <laughs> <laughs> um, I could try. I'll try anything. Um, but yes, you can still sell stuff small just or low priced. Remember to always consider your original cost, the fees for not only the item, but on your shipping. Because a lot of people forget about that, and you are paying that amount on shipping. If you're selling on Etsy, if you're selling on eBay, if you're selling on Poshmark, you don't have to care about shipping, but you still have to care about a 20% fee. So remember, there's that fee. And my quick thing in my head is 20%, 25%. If I see something that's $5, I know i got to get at least eight for it. I'm gonna, it costs me eight to sell it. So that's what... And then think about ways to up your average selling price. And lots are a way that I think I'm going to try and take a look at some of that stuff. And maybe what we'll do is I'll have Carl back on again, which we'll have him on again because we love having him here. Thank you again, Carl, for being here. Thanks, but you. you've given us a strategy that maybe we're going to try that with some of the stuff that we've got right now and put that on over the next month or so into some lots and see if we can actually sell them fast. Try even our own strategy of, Maybe we try auctioning them first to see if we can get some money with a lot at a certain amount. But we got yeah. lots and lots of stuff we could probably put into lots. Okay, so I did some quick math. Rick did some quick math for the end of the show. In 2020, our average selling price was $34. In 2020, our average selling price was $34. In 2021, it went up to 39 In 2021, it went up to 30, or 39 So that's... Uh, $5 yeah, it's a 15% increase. And for 2022, we're only at 40. So 2022, we're at 40. So we're, we're so we got four more months of the year to try and bring that up to at least 45 or 50 as the average selling price. But again, those are $10 items, 270 $10 items mixed in with 200 items that might be 50, 80, 100, $150 items. So that's the other thing. Keep in mind your mix. So that you are hopefully flipping those higher priced items along with those lower priced items to keep the money rolling in. Because as resellers, that's what we want. We want to keep the money rolling in. We don't want to have stagnant, low priced inventory taking up tons and tons of space. That's one of the reasons we're doing another Mac sold. We're trying to do them at least once a month now because we want to get rid of stuff that is taking up space. And I'm pulling plushies that I don't want to sell anymore because they're too big to ship and it's going to cost me too much to try and sell a, a plush for $10 or $15 and then have to charge $15 shipping on it. It just yeah. not doesn't make any sense. And at some point, even the shipping level, again, especially from Canada, but even on larger things now in the States because of the change yeah. that's gone over with USPS, yeah. if it's over 22 inches on any one side, there's a $4 incremental charge on it. If yeah. you don't think about those things, you're going to start having things that are 9 and 10 and 15 and $20 
that you're going to have to charge 20 and 25 and 30 dollars to ship people mm -hmm. aren't going to buy them they'll just avoid them and yeah. you can't bury the cost in the price <laughs> Because then you're losing money in that as well. So you got to remember those kind of things when you're thinking about. At least so she upcharges the stuff she lists on Posh by 25%, which is a really good thought to get that 20 But then Posh has a tendency, especially in the US, from what I hear, to be really everybody wants everything for five bucks. So that's one of the challenges, even when we were working on Pop Shop Live. Everybody wanted to buy stuff for five and ten dollars. It's like, yeah, we only pay ten percent, but we're only making fifty cents or five dollars on this or three dollars on this. So, uh, in real estate, we call small sales popcorn. So, love popcorn as long as you also get a beside the big bucket of popcorn, you have a steak before you go to the theater. <laughs> I don't know what kind of analogy that's. Just, I gotta have something that looks thicker and thicker and bigger there. Um, so. Thanks again, Carl, for your uh, really interesting thought process on stuff. I, again, I think that people learned a lot. You have to consider your bowl of wood as being something you may want to sell. Well, or just good to have. Every, every Monday, maybe on, uh, on your uh, listing it with Carl the Laser so you go, here's a page from our bowl of wood, oh, and then man. take it away. <laughs> Secret, secret information over here. No, I don't want you to give away <laughs> any secrets. Um, I, we, give away, <laughs> we give away enough already, but everybody has a different method of how they sell. Everybody has a different method on how they source mm -hmm. you aren't doing it wrong and neither is carl and neither am i as long as you're throwing it for fun you're making some money on it and you don't have a room that looks like an episode of hoarders organized hoarders versus hoarders <laughs> like one of the bad hoarders then, <laughs> then i think you're still doing okay uh, we'll see you again next Tuesday. Don't know what the topic will be yet. We're trying to figure it out. Might be a thrifter to throw it. We didn't end up going to the States like we thought we would, uh, shopping this past weekend just because there wasn't enough in these state sales to really get our asses getting down there. Uh, we're not sure if we're going this weekend, even though it is Easter weekend, cause we don't know if there'll be, we may not get our first taste of the U S again until the first week of May, but we still are going to keep thrifting cause that's what we do. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thank you again, Bye, Carl, everyone. for doing some calculations. <laughs> Thanks again to everybody on the side who is part of the Kennel Club. If you want to join us in there, it's really easy. Just take a look at the join, and you can join us in the Facebook group as well. Woof. I'm out of here. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.